Dante's Divine Comedy Inferno by Dante Alighieri Good evening. Welcome to Pangolin Reading. I am your host, Dandy Day Pangolin, and tonight we will be reading Dante Alighieri's Divine Comedy Inferno. A celebrated classic considered by many to be a masterpiece of world literature Dante's Inferno is the first of three separate poems, or cantique, along with Dante's Purgatorio and Dante's Paradiso, that make up Dante's Divine Comedy. Inferno, Purgatorio, and Paradiso tell the story of how Dante, as a pilgrim with the help of the Roman poet Virgil, travel through hell and purgatory before finally arriving in paradise, where the pilgrim's beloved muse Beatrice waits for him. The pilgrim, Dante, being a poet himself, had written the Inferno and the Divine Comedy as a whole in Terza Rima, a verse scheme of three-line stanzas with interlocking rhyme patterns, ABA, BCB, CDC, and so on. This can make the Divine Comedy hard to read, and sometimes even harder to understand, which is why I bought this specific version translated by Henry Wadsworth Longfellow and edited with an introductory text by Anna Amari Parker. For the sake of convenience, each of the following recordings will be separated into two parts, one with the chapters, or the cantos, introductory text, summarizing everything within, and then the canto itself. Feel free to listen to either part at your leisure. I will be adding timestamps to each recording, so that you may switch between the two whenever you'd like to do so. And that should about cover it. Thank you, once again, for joining us here at Pangolin Reading. My voice is starting to get sore, so it is my pleasure to finally give to you, without further ado, Dante's Divine Comedy, Inferno. Canto 1 The Dark Forest The Hill of Difficulty the panther, the lion, and the wolf. Virgil. In the middle of his life, Dante has left the straightforward pathway and is lost in a dark forest. He tries to regain the path by climbing a mountain, but his way is barred by a leopard, a lion, and a she-wolf, each creature representing a different sin. Virgil appears and offers to show him another way, one that leads through hell and purgatory. After that, a more worthy guide, Dante's muse Beatrice, will lead him onwards to paradise. Virgil, as a pagan, is not allowed to go there. Dante gladly adopts Virgil as his leader. Midway upon the journey of our life, I found myself within a forest dark, for the straightforward pathway had been lost. Ah me, how hard a thing it is to say. What was this forest savage, rough and stern, which, in the very thought, renews the fear? So bitter is it, death is little more, but of the good to treat which there I found, speak will I of the other things I saw there. I cannot well repeat how there I entered. So full was I of slumber at the moment in which I had abandoned the true way. But after I had reached a mountain's foot, at that point where the valley terminated, which had, with consternation, pierced my heart, upward I looked, and I beheld its shoulders, vested already with that planet's rays which leadeth others right by every road. Then was the fear a little quieted that in my heart's lake had endured throughout the night, which I had passed so piteously. And even as he who with distressful breath forth issued from the sea upon the shore turns to the water perilous and gazes, so did my soul, that still was fleeing onward, turn itself back to re-behold the pass which never yet a living person left. After my weary body I had rested, the way resumed I on the desert slope so that the firm foot ever was the lower. And lo, almost where the ascent began, 
a panther, light and swift exceedingly, which with spotted skin was covered over. And never moved she from before my face, nay, rather did impede so much my way, that many times I to return had turned. The time was the beginning of the morning, and up the sun was mounting with those stars that with him were, what time the love divine at first in motion set those beauteous things. So were to me occasion of good hope, the variegated skin of that wild beast, the hour of time, and the delicious season, but not so much that did not give me fear, a lion's aspect which appeared to me. He seemed as if against me he were coming, with head uplifted and with ravenous hunger, so that it seemed the air was afraid of him. And a she-wolf, that with all hungerings seemed to be laden in her meagerness, and many folk has cause to live forlorn. She brought upon me so much heaviness, with the affright that from her aspect came, that I, the hope, relinquished of the height. And as he is who willingly acquires, and the time comes that causes him to lose, who weeps in all his thoughts, and is despondent. E'en such made me that beast without in peace, which, coming on against me by degrees, thrust me back thither, where the sun is silent. While I was rushing downward to the lowland, before mine eyes did one present himself, who seemed, from long-continued silence, hoarse. When I beheld him in the desert vast, Have pity on me, unto him I cried, whichever thou art, or shade, or real man. He answered me, Not man. Man once I was, and both my parents were of Lombardy, and Mantuans by country, both of them. Sub Julio was I born, though it was late, and lived at Rome under the good Augustus, during the time of false and lying gods. A poet was I, and I sang that just, Son of Anchises, who came forth from Troy, after that Ilion the superb was burned. But thou, why goest thou back to such annoyance? Why climbest thou not the Mount Delectable, which is the source and cause of every joy? Now art thou that Virgilius, and that fountain which spreads abroad so wide a river of speech? I made response to him, with bashful forehead. Oh! Of the other poets, honor and light, avail me the long study and great love that have impelled me to explore thy volume. Thou art my master, and my author thou. Thou art alone the one from whom I took the beautiful style that has done honor to me. Behold, the beast, for which I have turned back, do thou protect me from her famous sage, for she doth make my veins and pulses tremble. Thee it behoves to take another road, responded he, when he beheld me weeping, if from this savage place thou wouldest escape, because this beast at which thou criest out suffers not any one to pass her way, but so doth harass him that she destroys him, and has a nature so malign and ruthless that never doth she glut her greedy will, and after food is hungrier than before. Many the animals with whom she weds, and more they shall be still, until the greyhound comes, who shall make her perish in her pain. He shall not feed on either earth or pelf, but upon wisdom, and on love and virtue, twixt Feltro and Feltro shall his nation be. Of that low Italy shall he be the savior, on whose account the maid Camilla died, Euryalus. Turnus, Nissus, of their wounds. Through every city shall he hunt her down, until he shall have driven her back to hell, there from whence envy first did let her loose. Therefore I think and judge it for thy best, thou follow me, and I will be thy guide, and lead thee hence through the eternal place, where thou shalt hear the desperate lamentations shalt see the ancient spirits disconsolate, who cry out, each one, for the second death. And thou shalt see those who contended are, 
within the fire, because they hope to come, whene'er it may be, to the blessed people. To whom, then, if thou wishest to ascend, a soul shall be for that than I more worthy. With her at my departure, I will leave thee, because that emperor who reigns above, and that I was rebellious to his law, wills that through me none come into his city. He governs everywhere, and there he reigns. There is his city, and his lofty throne. O oh, happy he, whom there too he elects. And I to him, poet, I thee entreat, by that same God whom thou didst never know, so that I may escape this woe and worse, thou wouldst conduct me there, where thou hast said, that I may see the portal of St. Peter, and those thou makest so disconsolate. Then he moved on, and I behind him followed.